Welcome back to the Foundations of Science course at Michigan State University. So physics has taught us quite a bit about matter, specifically that it has charge and takes up space. And if we aren't talking about nuclear reactions, which is most of the time, then it can't be destroyed or created. This means that the log you burn in the fireplace isn't destroyed. Some of the matter is in the ashes, but the rest have been moved to the air. None of it has been destroyed. This has implications in environmental science and the burning of fossil fuels. We also learned that bodies of matter are affected by four fundamental forces. Two nuclear forces, one weak and one strong, that you usually don't have to think about in your daily lives, and then we have gravitational and electromagnetic forces. Gravitational forces lead to potential energy that can be stored based on position and can lead to kinetic energy, which is seen in moving matter. There are many examples of how electromagnetic force leads to different phenomena, but the one that we're most interested in was how, when electrons and atoms are excited and then fall back down to more stable forms, they kick out an electromagnetic radiation energy, such as light or x-rays. The cool thing about both gravity and electromagnetic radiation is that as you get further away from the source, the weaker they become because they are spread out over a greater area. It's hard to believe that distant stars and planets are affecting your behavior when your desk light has a greater impact on you, both with regards to electromagnetic and gravitational force. Now we're going to explore more about matter and energy, but this time in the field of geology. Scientists in geology might look at layers of rock in the field of stratigraphy, or how rocks are formed and what they're made of, as in the field of petrology, but most of what we'll be discussing falls under the area of structural geology, which looks at large-scale strains and changes in rocks and their shapes. These strains can lead to the creation of mountains and the movement of the continents due to plate tectonics. For matter, we'll be looking at the concept of buoyancy and how qualities like density, pressure, and composition play a role in the movement of matter. We'll also be adding thermal energy, a form of kinetic energy, to our repertoire of energy concepts. And afterward, we'll be able to apply these concepts to the lost continent of Atlantis and seeing if it could have happened, or is it just a sinking proposition? Let's get started and see.